All right, hello. Uh, today, let's have a look at uh, some of the picks that uh, are calling the shots are actually looking at and see what the technical conditions present for them so far. All right, let's begin with Semirara. So having a look at the graph of Semirara here, we can clearly still see that the stock is still pushing on into a downtrend. So the indicated downtrend line it still shows that prices are still below that particular line. And that means that it may still work, work on trying to be able to pull that resistance out of its uh, forefront before being able to convince us of a particular reversal. So right now we are seeing a downtrend rally and uh, we'll probably anticipate that we'll feel resistance closer between 30 to 31 pesos per share. Let's go to Mega World. Now, Megaworld has actually been stuck in a, in a wider consolidation band. Now, if you look at the graph of uh, Megaworld here, you will see that it still is locked in between the top barrier that we have and maybe the two lows we've recently seen here. We also have a midterm resistance point closer to about 450. And this is the range that Megaworld needs to beat in order for it to be able to widen its prospective advance. If it can break above 4 pesos and 50 cents, then Megaworld should be on its way to recovering back to 5 pesos. Right now, I would be range trading this particular smaller range until, of course, the 450 can break. Let's look at Ayala Land. Now, Ayala Land, I think, has gone through a reversal condition already. If you were to look at the initial downtrend line, which was broken sometime in uh, between July and August, you would see a clear break above this particular point of resistance and that prices did recover back to 45 pesos per share. Thereafter, it managed to be able to pull itself back down. Now, I know it may seem quite heavy in terms of its declining uh, magnitude, but this is very common. This is what we call a support retest condition. And its ability to be able to so far stand at this support of about 38 pesos per share was actually quite crucial. These two lows here indicate that support seems to be holding on quite well and that the potential for it to break over its 40 or 41 peso resistance area is now what we're waiting for to be able to convince and confirm that the reversal has taken place. If we do see a break above that, then we might see a wider rally develop in Ayala land. Perhaps first that can recover back to 45, maybe something that can build up much bigger later on. Next, we have Metro Bank. Now, Metrobank's been in a downtrend for quite some time as well. But so far, we've seen quite a healthy amount of a base take place in Metrobank. Now, one of the things that we watch out for, for looking for ten potential reversal, is an area pattern near the low. And right now, Metrobank seems to be building just that, a reversal base. That particular bottom has its major support at about 63.80. Uh, the resistance of that particular range is closer to about 69.60. So right now it's trading within that particular trading band. It would need to break the upper boundary of that range before a potential reversal can actually be spotted. If you notice, I will draw a downtrend line for you. And you would notice that the downtrend line is actually still intact. So if I were to be an aggressive trader, you might want to be buying this closer to the lower end of the range rather than the higher end of the range because the higher end of the range presents a much heavier zone of resistance that might prove to be a bit more choppy with prices. So do not take too much of a heavy risk on this until prices can break above that particular zone. Let's have a look at DNL. Now, DNL we discussed in um, a previous episode that we had here before, but in continuation of that, DNL went through a reversal particular pattern already. It broke out of that pattern. It also broke out of a key resistance zone quite recently above 11 pesos per share. And we do see a continuing flow for uh, DNL right now. Into the short term, however, we did notice some overbought conditions tag into this particular chart. And because of that, we would anticipate that there may be some profit-taking sessions, maybe for a while, but uh, 
the uptrend for in the short term for DNL should present itself to continue with major support maybe looking closer to about 1075. Uh, so any purchases closer to that price might be more optimum to be able to get into this trade. This should present still good medium to long term prospects for the stock. Let's go at Bloomberry. Now, similar to Metrobank, Bloomberry has a very similar type of pattern. It also has retested its base three times. It's also built on a very narrow pattern on the upper area. And again, would also need to break above nine pesos to be able to confirm a potential reversal indication for this. Just like what we said earlier in Metrobank, you will try to buy this at the lower end of the range. And if you can somehow break above nine pesos, that's when you can start adding more to the position as the confirmation of that reversal condition is actually coming to fulfill itself. If you were to be able to look at a longer term trend line into this, you can also see that uh, we are also playing out at around the crucial point where we are today. So if we do get a punch up above that, plus the break above nine, it should be able to give Metrobank much, much more space to be able to rally forward to. So keep an eye on this into the short term. Ayala Corporation. Now Ayala Corporation has actually tested its low twice. If you notice a low that was indicated here back in June and July, and another low that was just indicated very recently, this is what we call a major or double support test. And given its recent rebound, that tells us that support is indeed held quite solid and that an advance is now attempting to be able to push itself off from a reversal pattern. Let me draw out this pattern that it's recently broken out of. So you can see a short-term downtrend line has been broken. Prices are now standing right above that. And I think the perspective on the upside might look quite well. This might be a good entry point as it is already now. And you might want to be able to buy this a little bit more gradually, the prospect of it trying to climb back closer to the previous high of 1,023. So this is something that I think should be able to work its way back for, for investors. So please do go inside this stock already. Then we have PLDT. Now, PLDT has been stuck in a consolidation for a couple of months now. And uh, let's just draw out the resistance band for that. And you also notice that this particular resistance band is actually standing right on the 200 day moving average, which is a key area to be able to watch out for. If you draw a short term uptrend line into PLDT's graph, you would notice that the range of the consolidation is actually narrowing. That's a good thing to be able to look at. That means that a decision is going to be made into PLDT any moment now. And by the looks of it, it probably has a very healthy chance of breaking resistance. Given that particular indication and a bigger uh, trend line break, which I will show you, which took place back in August, this is another reversal pattern that we're waiting to kick in. So push above that zone of about 1440 should be able to give us a tip off that uh, prices are back into an advance and that we may be able to add more into the position of PLDT. Finally, we have Eagle. Now Eagle Cement, unlike the rest, uh, unfortunately had broken down sometime in September. And given so that it generated a, a two top uh, pattern over here and broke the support of a horizontal band right there. And that means that we're currently into a corrective wave. In the shorter term, we're probably going to see a very small area pattern band for the meantime. And until um, Eagle can actually break over 15 pesos and 20 cents, I'm more likely to stay defensive on the stock for the meantime, up on that tail I can see demand pushing its way above that resistance point. Because if we don't see that, then it's quite possible that we could still see some corrective effort come out of, of Eagle for the meantime. So wait for the potential resistance break before moving even at all into this particular stock. We've covered the other issues which actually look a little better and you might want to be able to concentrate on the first issues that we talked about first and keep this in reserve as last just in case we do see a resistance break. 
So there you have it. Uh, here are the nine stocks that are calling the shots managed to percent for, for the month. Uh, keep in tandem with what we talked about with regard to reversals and stay in tune with the particular trends as they come about. The weaker ones are your last picks. Stay with the ones that have greater upsides and have minimal downsides. And that's how you come around to be able to pick the better option.